Hello class, today we're going to be looking at heaps and priority queues. So the objectives, we're going to learn what is a heap. We're going to learn about um, the Java collection framework class called the priority queue, which is made using heaps. And we're also going to be looking at another kind of sorting algorithm that called heap sort that uses the idea of heaps underneath. Let's first talk about what is a priority queue. By the name itself, you can kind of see it's it's a, a queue. It's kind of a line, a line that is ordered in in order of priority. So you have higher priority items that will be serviced or, or retrieved from this queue first. Now, when you put an object into the priority queue, you have to have some way of ordering it. And so it must implement the comparable interface in order to know what the priority order is. By convention, the smallest item has uh, the higher priority. And that's just the Java uh, way it's done. It doesn't have to be. Now, how can one implement a priority queue? There's many different ways, and we're just kind of explore some of them and contrast them. Uh, we could implement it with a sorted list. We can implement it with an unsorted list, but each one of them kind of has an issue. If we were to use a sorted list, suppose, it, suppose we have these items in our priority queue. In this case, number one, if we wanted to get the next item that's right at the head, that's easy. Then we get the next item, that's easy. Those are O1 operations. But suppose we wanted to stick in an element, you know, maybe stick in this element nine, we'd have to kind of hop along and find the right place to insert it. And so in that case, that might take, you know, that's going to be an ON type of operation in terms of inserting an item into this sorted list. So retrieval is fast, but insertion is ON. Let's look at an unsorted list. Now, in an unsorted list, um, that it's, you know, if I want to stick in another item, I just stick it at the very end. And that's very easy to do. Very quick to do. But the problem is, how do I get the highest priority item? In this case, I'd have to iterate along all the way through, all the way to the very end, and then I find out, oh, okay, here is my highest priority item, delete that item. And so, in this case, it's, it's the opposite. Inserting a new item is very fast, O1, but removing it, finding the highest priority item in this case, is an ON activity. So either of these cases, we kind of have an issue. Now, we could also um, use an array of lists. Now, now, this works well if I have a fixed number of priorities. Suppose I have eight different levels of priority. And so, you know, these are my object zero priority, or objects with priority zero, objects with priority one, etc. And so it's actually very easy to just kind of pull out these items here very quickly, um, fairly quickly. Now, inserting is also not too bad either. If I know the item is a priority five, I could just add an item pretty quickly into this array here. So not too bad. Um, but the limitation is I have a fixed number of priorities, in this case, eight. And maybe um, I don't want a fixed number of priorities. Maybe it's just servicing um, individuals in, in alphabetical order. And in that case, I, I can't have a fixed kind of bucket of priorities. So another idea, another idea is a binary search tree. We've learned about this before and in a binary search tree to get the lowest or smallest item I would just iterate through my binary search tree all the way to the leftmost node and in that case remove that piece here. Now this is pretty decent in terms of removing or, or retrieving that item but the issue and, and this would be a log n type of thing so that's nice in a binary search tree. The issue is in inserting. So if I wanted to add an item, um, 
after a while, if you remember in a binary search tree, it could start getting unbalanced. And then we would want to kind of rebalance it to make sure that it's always kind of a nice size. So there's kind of an issue with the insertion of a node in a binary search tree. So that would also be an issue. So um, taking it out, pretty good. Putting it in, kind of hard because we have to rebalance it a lot, perhaps. So what can we do? Today we're going to talk about heaps, which is a way of solving this problem. So a heap is a kind of binary tree, but it's not a binary search tree. It has a different property. And heaps are a way of implementing a priority queue that allows us to both add and remove an object in log n time. So we're going to look at that, and we're actually going to look at how we can implement uh, a heap using an array. Now let's talk about heaps first. Kind of what is a heap? I'm skipping over a couple pages to this slide here. A heap is a complete binary tree. Oh, actually, let me back up. Sorry, I, I do need to talk about this uh, uh, word right here. A complete uh, tree. So um, <clears throat> a full tree is a tree that has uh, all levels filled. Um, this is a picture of a full tree um, of height h, where there are 2 to the h minus 1 nodes. Now, a complete tree is not completely filled, where maybe the last level has some missing nodes. So you can see in this case, these three nodes are missing over here. This is what's called a complete tree. Now, a heap is a complete binary tree with a very special property. The property is that the value at each node, um, this node here, everything underneath it, in, in the subtree underneath it, is bigger. So you notice here, this node right here, everything underneath it is equal or bigger. This is not a heap because this node, this subtree right here, this number 12 here, this node, this item here, 8 underneath it, is smaller. So that violates the property. And so this is a heap and this is not a heap. Again, the value in each node does not exceed any of the values in the left or the right subtrees. Basically, the root holds the smallest value. So, a heap, again, is a binary tree, and we talked about binary trees before, and we always implemented binary trees prior by use of a, kind of a, a linked list of nodes. You know, we have a node here and a right pointer and a left pointer to the, to the child nodes. Now, that could be done, but it's kind of inconvenient um, as a way of inserting or removing items in this heap efficiently. So a heap actually can be implemented, this binary tree, this complete binary tree can be implemented by way of an array. And that's what we're going to look at right now. Now, as we implement it in an array, we're going to actually number the elements in a very special way. This is a diagram of how we're going to number the elements in the complete tree. We're going to start at the uh, number one. The root is one. And then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now there's a nice property here where if I know this is my parent, the children can be calculated by multiplying by two and by adding one. So left node, I multiply by two. Right node, right child, I multiply by two and I add one. I could find the parent from any node by just merely dividing by two, taking it, doing an integer divide. So say I'm at node five right here, the parent is found by taking five divided by two, the integer is two. Um, say I'm down here at node 9. What is the parent node? 9 divided by 2, 4. So 
I could very quickly traverse up and down this complete tree by using these uh, special numbering uh, patterns. Okay, And this actually leads to how we can store it into an array very easily. So here's the example of this. So this is a, a heap, actually. Um, you could see here that Argentina, starting with the letter A, is the smallest um, uh, object here. Everything underneath it is bigger than Argentina. And then on, say, the left side here, Brazil, everything underneath it is bigger than Brazil. Chile, everything underneath it is bigger than Chile. Now, you notice this, that underneath it, there's not a sorting order. You notice here, Dominica and Egypt. Um, Dominica is not necessarily on the left-hand side. I mean, in a binary search tree, it would be, but in a heap, it doesn't have to be. It's not a complete sort. Um, you notice also here, you have Haiti over here, even though in a binary search tree, it would have no business being over here. Okay, so anyways, this is a picture of a heap. And how do we store this into an array? Well, we number them and we just stick them into the array according to the uh, this the number here, the node number. And so Argentina is at item one, Brazil is at item two, et cetera, et cetera. And so again, it allows us quickly to go up and down this tree just by doing some calculations. So if I'm at Haiti, node eight, its parent is at eight divided by two, that's Egypt. And so I'm not even looking at the tree, I'm just looking at the numbers here. Egypt's parent is four divided by two, that's Brazil. Brazil's parent is um, two divided by two, which is one. And I can go the other way as well. If I'm at Egypt, I can find its um, left node by just multiplying by two. Uh, four times two is eight. Haiti is the left node of Egypt. So. I don't need a picture in order to traverse. I just do some math operations to go up and down my tree. Okay, now the the beauty of the heap is that we can add and remove items in log n time. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at how we do that. And um, to add an item, we reheap up, and I'll diagram what all these words are in a second. And then to remove, we reheap down. So let's talk about each one of these one by one. We're going to look at adding an item to the heap. So in this case, we're going to add China into the heap. So what we do is, it's suppose it's, you know, we, we put it into the last slot um, of our tree. Now, it's probably in the wrong place. And so what we need to do is to correct it and to put it into the right place to make this a heap. Because right now, when we just arbitrarily stick China into node 9, this is no longer a heap. So we need to reheap it. We need to turn it back into a heap. And we do that by doing what's called a reheap up um, operation. So what we do is we just say, OK, between China and Egypt, the parent, do we need to swap? And in this case, yes, we do. China is less than Egypt, so we need to swap. So that's what we do right here. Then we keep on doing that until we're done. So then I say, okay, between China and its parent, Dominica, do I need to swap? Yes, I do. So I swap. And then I say one more time, between China and Brazil, do I need to swap? No, I don't. Done. Okay, so this is the idea of reheaping up where I take my item, we put it at the very end, and just kind of bubble it up as far as it needs to go. And you can see that this is a log n activity. Okay, let's look at removing. Removing is going to be using this idea of reheaping down. Now, what do we do? If I want to remove an item, well, I get, I retrieve Argentina, which is the highest priority item. But then when I do that, I have an empty node here. So what I do is I take the last node, France, and I move it up into the top slot. But now this is no longer a heap. I've broken the heap. And so I need to reheap it. And I'm going to reheap it down. So what do I do? 
I do the following. Between both of its children, I take the smallest version, the smallest object, and I swap. So between Brazil and Chile, Brazil is smaller, so I swap these two here. And then I continue on. I look at its children between Egypt and Dominica. Which one is smaller? Dominica. And so I swap Dominica and France because Dominica is less than France. And once I do that, I'm done. Okay, so that's just the other way of reheaping down. Pretty simple process. So um, the Java uh, collection class has this priority queue, which can hold any sort of object as long as it is of comparable type. And it has these four different methods, is empty, add, remove, and again, removing and adding are both O log and activities. And peak, peak is a O1, it's just basically what is the root. And the priority queue is implemented in Java using a heap that's implemented as a binary tree inside of an array. Okay, lastly, we're gonna talk about heap sort. I can use this idea of, um, um, idea of a heap to quickly sort. So what I do is, step one, I put all the elements into a heap one at a time. After I've put all the items into the heap, I remove item by item. I remove the root, reheap, remove the next root, reheap, renew, remove the next root, reheap. So each time I'm taking out the lowest, the next smallest value every single time. Now, if I wanted to sort it in a, in the other order, um, you know, from maximum to minimum, I would create a max heap instead. And then every time I remove an object, I'm getting the maximum, the next greatest value. So anyways, by doing this algorithm, um, heap sort algorithm using heaps, uh, we can get the same kind of n log n type of speed. Okay, so just as a review, I'm going to just hold this slide here, think about these answers, and I'll open up these boxes in a count of one, two, three. Oh, these are already open, sorry. I'll open these up in a few seconds. Here we go. Okay, class, that's it for today. Have a good day, everybody.